My name is Tiffany Dobbins and I am the new director of DPGNA. Are you looking for a fun and loving classroom? If you're looking for a nurturing, academic, home away from home, Christian environment for your children, then please visit our website at gppk.com. We have open enrollment all year long. We would love for your children and family to be a part of our GPP and K family. You may call or email our main office to schedule a tour. We look forward to hearing from you. Good morning, church, church online and church in person. Welcome to the worship of God. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, you're live streaming with us, or perhaps watching the recording later, we believe that God's spirit has called us together as one body to praise God together, to pray together and to serve together. 
Live streamers, please sign in now through the chat feature, if you will. And in-person folk, use your smartphones um, or the paper registration out in the gathering space. We would love to know that you are here. It's good to see some old friends or some returning friends, I should say. And we're also always glad to know that the live stream congregation is worshiping with us too. Now let us center ourselves in the presence of God as Alvin Puemi leads us. Good morning. Please join me in a call to worship. We seek the power of God to meet us in our helplessness. We seek the clarity of God to meet us in our confusion. We seek the mercy of God to meet us in our brokenness. We seek the spirit of God to meet us in our division. Let's pray. You are the Alpha and the Omega, O oh Lord. You are the creator of all, and we glorify your name. We invite you to our presence today. We cannot do anything except through your blessings. May we be filled with your spirit and your holy power. May you accept our worship as we sing your praises. Let everything that we do today and every day be divinely guided by your power. In Jesus' name, amen.
The Bible tells us that the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in Christ, we dare to approach God with confidence. Please join me in the call of confession. Searching God, we are so attached to our possessions. We have trouble holding them. We are so connected to our pleasures that we cannot feel the pain of those around us. We are so stuck on ourselves. We cannot sense our soul sleeping. Most merciful God, loosen us from the grip of the world so we may feel your healing touch. Serve us from our sin so our spirit may bind us to you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Silent prayer. The God who calls us is the God who created us. The God who formed us is the God who forgives us. This is the good news. We are God's new creation. Amen. Well, if you, oh my goodness gracious, if you are going to be coming to Sunday school, I would love it if you would come up here with me now. I have some questions I want to ask you. Would you come up, Jacob? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, good, there we come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, today in Sunday School, we're going to talk all about sharing justice and how Jesus showed us how to do that a long, long time ago. The idea of sharing justice sounds a little funny, doesn't it? How exactly do you share justice? What do you think? Anybody have any ideas? How do you share justice? You can share a sandwich. You can share a joke. But how do you share justice? Well, let me ask you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It just so happens I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Let's say you were walking home from school one day, and you saw some kid being mean to some other kid. Maybe, maybe the, the kid that was being mean was making fun of the way they talked or the way they looked. Or maybe, I know this has happened to me, when you're a new kid in a, a neighborhood, somebody, like a mean kid, will come up and say, I know you're new here. You better watch out. Well, what would you do? What? I know that each and every one of you would try to help you would stick up for the person who was getting, having the mean person talk to them. And that's pretty much what justice means. It means helping. God created the world and filled it full of beautiful plants and animals and all of these wonderful, lovely, different people and told us that we were supposed to keep an eye on each other. We were supposed to look out for everybody else and the world and the, and the animals and everything else. We're supposed to stick up for each other and speak up for each other. That is one way that we can share love, is by sharing justice. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, please help us to be the people you put us here to be. To be people who share justice. and goods and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, youth are going to go out that door. Kids are going to go out that door. And parents, I have put a sign up for you so that you can find us this week because we have hidden them down those stairs and around the corner. But there is a sign pointing you how to get there. And I will be there.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, illuminate this day and enlighten us as we seek to know you through your word. May we be led by your light so our heart may be open to your word. We pray that we receive every word you speak to us today. Amen. Amen. The first scripture reading for the day is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with the wicked fist. Such fighting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble on oneself? Is it to bow down the head like the bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the tongues of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is this not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor to, into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You should cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your need in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up to the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairers of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. I ask in the, in the spirit of the gospel that we will read that you will rise in body or spirit for the reading. Our reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19. Listen now to a word from the gospel of Luke. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Holy God, I pray that you speak through me and when and where necessary in spite of me. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Growing up, it seemed that there, at every church uh, that I would see from the back seat of my parents' car, eventually the front seat, uh, there was a huge banner, and this banner was always white, and the banner had this like yellow uh, kind of pointed cloud thing, and then in kid-friendly lettering, it said Awana. And I always wanted to know what Awana was, and I don't know why I waited 25 years. But um, I Googled it yesterday, and Awana is uh, approved workmen are not ashamed, Awana. Now, Awana are these um, midweek uh, Christian education things for um, children from three to sixth grade. And I always wanted to be in this because it had that cool kind of Nickelodeon lettering. And sometimes the churches would offer pizza. And, um, you know, as they say, the more things change, the more things stay the same. I would pull over right now if a church was offering me pizza. Um, And I would find out, like in school, that one of the activities that people did in Awana were sword drills. I don't know if you're familiar with sword drills. Uh, If you think about um, Paul, where he talks about putting on the armor of God, the breastplate of salvation, um, there is a sword, and the sword is the word of God. So a sword drill is this fast pace, find it in the Bible. So all, a whole bunch of fourth graders have their Bibles out, and I yell, Romans 12, 2, and they shoot up like whack-a-mole. And that's a, it's a way for them to learn the scripture. Uh, and I actually, I'm kind of jealous because I think I would have done a little bit better on Bible content if I had done uh, the sword drills. So when I read this passage, I was I like, Jesus definitely was an Awana, uh, the, the Jewish version, and he definitely was the winner of sword drills. And this is sort of the ultimate sword drill throwdown for Jesus. He has been, uh, he's in his town of Nazareth, his hometown, but it says he Uh, had been brought up there. He had been raised there. Sounds like there's been some time that Jesus was away from home. And people are talking. Uh, I was thinking about that. People are talking, talking about people, that song. Um, And we don't know what they're talking about at this point, but people are talking about Jesus. The word has already gotten out. He's fresh from his 40 days in the wilderness, and he returns to his hometown to do hometown things, like go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Scriptures say it was as custom or as usual. It was something he always did. And he goes into the synagogue, and the uh, synagogue assistant hands him the scroll of Isaiah, and it's as if he picks this passage, or perhaps that spirit that descended him on him in the river Jordan like a dove and that was with him in the wilderness picks it for him. For it is quite a word. It is quite a word. The Spirit of God has anointed me, and it has anointed me to proclaim and to preach and to liberate. And Jesus knows the Torah, and he knows the prophets. We remember that story when he was 12, and he said he must be about his father's business. 
when his frantic parents were searching for him before you could have find my friends on the iPhone. Um, they were frantic parents looking for a 12-year-old who was, of all things, sitting at the feet of rabbis and learning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus, and it is upon him to proclaim, to, de- to release, to liberate. And the Spirit of the Lord sends Jesus to the poor and the captive and the blind, And if we are in Christ, that same spirit is on us. That same call is on us to proclaim and to liberate and to preach and to release. We now interpret the scripture through Jesus, the incarnate word. He is the word of God and he is how we will understand the word of God. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. Now Luke places this passage early in the gospel as if this is Jesus' motto and Jesus' mission. Proclaim, liberate, release, and preach. And preach to the poor the first population. And every time we hear the word poor in scripture, it's as if we have never heard the word before and don't know what it means. Do we take it literally or do we take it metaphorically? It doesn't matter how we define poor or what we think it means because if we take it at face value, then we immediately are faced with our shadow side, the side of our privilege if we take it for face value, and if we take it as a metaphor, the side of our pride, privilege, because if poor is an economic demarcation, then we are forced to see all that we have when so many have not. I was convicted in the prayer of confession and by my task rabbit yesterday, who was helping me organize many things upon uh, some of them books and some of them shoes, and he said, I'm a minimalist. And I said, I'm kind of like a almost maximalist. Uh, and he said, I only have two pairs of shoes. And I was like, did you just quit cold turkey? How do you go from having all this stuff to nothing? And I mean, um, it's minimalism is cool. I've watched some videos. I'm not there yet. But I was convicted because I'm a pastor and I want to see the kingdom of God come to life. And so often... I'm weighed down by capitalism and my desire to have more and more. While I know that people have less and less. And if poor is some metaphor, then our shadow side is pride. Because we don't want anyone to see that we're suffering. We filter and edit out our brokenness so that the world looks like, so to to the world, we look like we have it all together. We take pictures in golden hour, and we filter everything, because we don't want people to know if we're poor in spirit, because we are not the poor in spirit, and we thank God. We have fooled people again. And all of this happens on the Sabbath day in the synagogue, and it starts with talking about the usual, about the normal, about what is customary. Because usually the poor stay poor, and the prisoner stays in chains and behind bars, and usually the blind never get to see. And usually the oppressed stay with a foot on their neck. And usually we attend worship, and things are as usual. We might sit in the same chair, or recognize the same people around us at worship. We might hear the same scriptures over and over again, but are we really expecting the Spirit to show up? Or are we just doing things as usual, as customary, as normal? But Jesus shows up in the synagogue, and the Spirit 
is upon him and the Spirit is upon us, and it is calling us to do the work and mission of Jesus Christ. Jesus it calls us to enact a different type of world and to enact the year of Jubilee, which happened possibly every 50 years, but nobody really knows. And so I wonder to the Israelites and to us today, when we think about the Jubilee year, do we think like Langston Hughes and Lorraine Hansberry, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it shrivel up like a raisin in the sun? Or when have we seen restoration of land and property and being repairs of the breach? But Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. There is no more shrinking like a raisin in the sun. The spirit is on Jesus and he is the risen son. Spirit is upon me, and so things are not going to be as usual. And Jesus reads the scroll and reads Isaiah, and it talks about liberation and freedom. I know there's that saying that everybody wants to get to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I think everybody wants freedom, but nobody wants to sacrifice. Freedom isn't free. It costs us something. And so we say we want freedom, but we see living this close to the nation's capital how long it takes certain people to be free. Because so many times we want to hold on to what's ours as if it is a diminishing commodity. So last night I was um, talking about Aladdin, which actually comes up in conversation quite a bit. Um, And Aladdin, the original Aladdin, um, I was just telling Mary Beth, that was my first CD, the Aladdin soundtrack. Um, I still have my pencil box from third grade, so you have a lot lot of things. Now, um, if you remember Aladdin, when he uh, first, the genie first comes out, now Aladdin is poor, he's a street urchin, um, and he says, I'm going to use one of my wishes to free you. And the movie happens, and there's carpets, and Jafar, and that, uh, eight, oh, it's such a good movie. The original one, so, so good. And then it seems as if the genie played by Robin Williams has had this happen before. Nobody wants to give up that third wish. Aladdin has something that he wants. But for some reason, somehow, maybe there was some spirit on Aladdin And he remembers that he has said that he would let the genie go free. I don't know if you remember Robin Williams says, 10,000 years and what a creak in the neck. Freedom costs us something. It's going to cost us something to be an unusual people. Because we follow an unusual God. And so things aren't going to be able to be as usual We cannot continue to just make Sunday a muscle memory thing where we get in the car at 10.15 and we're at brunch by 12.15. Because our faith and our God is anything but rote and routine. No, Jesus is about reversals and restoration and resurrection. And the Spirit of God is upon us. So proclaim and preach and liberate and go to the poor, whoever they may be, and the captive and the prisoner and the blind and the oppressed and do some unusual things, some unusual God-like things. In the name of the Creator, comforter, and redeemer. Amen.
please take your seats. I'm looking for a Seneth, a song. Is she here? All right. A Seneth or Joseph? Joseph Torman. All right, well, guess what? I get to say um, two things. Number one, November 6th, mark your calendar for International Celebration Lunch After Church. November 6th, after the 11 o'clock service, International Celebration Lunch. And by international, as Seneth told us at 930, she means everybody. Um, we are celebrating our, the diversity of this congregation, and we are committing ourselves to getting to know each other and to learn about each other. So everybody here is from somewhere else. Everybody here has a heritage, a background. Um, maybe it's a short, uh, a short heritage here, and maybe it's a long time heritage here. But um, she said... She told us at 9.30 that um, you remember your heritage by the clothing that you wear and by the foods that you eat and the customs that you have, especially at holidays and celebrations. So think about New Year's Day and um, the different foods that you eat on New Year's. Some of us have collard greens and cornbread and black-eyed peas. And there's a reason. Oh, a Seneth. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry. I'm giving your speech, and I'm not doing as well as you did. Hurry, hurry. Yeah. Be, uh, we welcome you. Take a brief moment. A brief moment. Good morning, congregation of God's faithful people. My name is Asenath Asang, an elder in GPC who has never served because of the COVID-19. But anyway, I'm still happy that I have that name, Elder, attached to my name. Yeah, so I'm sure our Reverend was already introducing what we are all about on the first Sunday in November. We want to celebrate our international day in this congregation. And um, I'm going to be very brief because... I actually talked a lot at the 9 o'clock service. So we just want to thank God for the diversity that reigns in this congregation. Uh, that is why we set that day aside for us to come together as one faithful people of God to show how diverse we are, embracing each other like a family. We know that we come from different countries, different cultures, so today is just like homework or an assignment we want, that we want to give to all of us to go and think about, look at the people in the congregation who come from your own uh, community or from your own culture, and we see what we can come out with that day. We want that day to be a very beautiful, colorful day, and we promise that nobody should miss that day. Those who always close and they are running home, you're going to miss a lot of fun. So we are trying to see how people can dress in their various cultural outfits if you are comfortable doing that. It's no pressure on anybody. We dress in our cultural outfits. We bring some uh, food items from our various cultural backgrounds so that we can see what we have been eating and looking so beautiful and strong as we are. If you are only drinking water, bring the water. Let's drink it and uh, feel happy. So that is just a brief idea of what that day is going to look like. We're going to set up the Lindsay Hall. It will really be a day of feasting for GPC to celebrate our international and diverse nature in our congregation. We'll keep talking about it and reminding ourselves as the Sundays go by. Thank you so much for listening. All right. Uh, please welcome our good friend Norm Gordon as well to come and give us an update on uh, the Germantown Global Connection. I'm Norm Gordon. I am your local missionary doing a new thing in Germantown. Through the Germantown Global Connection, we gather, we serve, and we grow. And we've learned, just as GPC knows, that physical space matters to God. 
I know you all are looking at uh, different ways you can use this space here uh, that you have all week long. Uh, God uses physical space to do his work. So <clears throat> back in 2017, when some visionaries in Up County, uh, Montgomery County thought, why don't we bring all the social service agencies that are working Up County together into one big space where they can network together, coordinate, and connect better? And wouldn't it be great if there was such a space? And so uh, they asked uh, a bunch of people, and they asked, uh, when they asked three clergy persons to join them in the search, uh, we said, sure, I was one of those three. And we weren't sure why they invited us to do that. We weren't sure what kind of um, perspective we were going to be able to offer, but we went in with them in this search, went, looked at several different places, finally landed on one, and they said, we've got some state money, and uh, all together, we've got just enough, but not quite. So uh, we're looking for some funding. We thought, oh, that maybe that's why they invited us. <laughs> so uh, we uh, asked your presbytery, our presbytery, National Capital Presbytery, if they wanted to contribute towards this space. And lo and behold, our presbytery said, yes, we would like to invest $100,000 towards the purchase of a fourth floor suite for the purposes of uh, any, any group that's working for the disadvantaged and struggling families in Germantown. So, first slide here. Shepherd Pratt, a large regional mental health services uh, center, along with the state and our National Capital Presbytery, purchased, next slide, the fourth floor of this building, 12850 Middlebrook Road. It's right on the intersection of Middlebrook Road and Germantown Road. If you're familiar with Germantown, just a couple of blocks down from Seneca Valley High School. And the Presbytery, um, in exchange for their help in purchasing, uh, Shepard Pratt said, well, we'd like to give you an office space there for the duration of the lease, which is 15 years, free of charge. So the Presbytery has an office, and they decided to allow three groups, three new ministries in Up County. Uh, next slide. Uh, one you recognize in the middle, hopefully, Germantown Global Connection. That's the one uh, GPC has been supporting for the last seven years, and it's the ministry that I coordinate, along with a new worshiping community in Clarksburg, also sponsored by National Capital Presbytery called Creekside Church, as well as an earth care ministry, community forming in Dayspring Retreat Center, which is on the eastern side of Germantown. All three have been invited to have office space in this new office. Now, I want to tell you, none of the three of us clergy who are working, leading these ministries were particularly desperate for office space, okay? Working out of homes and, you know, coffee shops. And, and uh, Creekside Church, he works in a park, uh, a bench, uh, oftentimes— but what we were very much eager for was to be down the hall and rubbing shoulders on a day-to-day -day basis with the partners we worked with all the way through COVID. Folks like Germantown Help, the Up County Food Distribution Hub, Healthcare Initiative Foundation, Thriving Germantown, partners that we've worked with, we've given volunteers to, we added perspective to, and we have learned from we get to share office with. And so last week, just on Thursday, next slide, we moved in. There we are moving a, a desk in. We've, we've got some donated desks. And uh, next slide. And there we are. Uh, there's Gene Brown, who heads the Earth and Hands Ministry, and myself. It's not big, but we just need a place to land so that we can. And, and even on move-in day, I met two people that I hadn't met before that are clearly potential Partners, I think God has many future partners in store as we continue to serve the needs of uh, struggling families in uh, Germantown as we open up our literacy tutoring program and continue to work together. Uh, your presbytery and uh, all its congregations now have a, a mission outpost, an actual physical space in Germantown. You're invited to come up and visit anytime at 12850 Middlebrook Road as an opportunity to embed amongst those who are serving and continue to shine the light of God's love and God's mercy in that place. Thanks for your support. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. 
And God has anointed us to do all of these wonderful things, right? To celebrate our diversity together in a few weeks at dinner, at lunch, to rejoice with um, people in Germantown who are getting connected and making relationships, and now to participate ourselves in an act of offering. We invite your financial gifts um, as a as a way of responding to God's generosity to us, giving online or giving through the app uh, or in the baskets or even through the mail. And a special thank you to our musicians who give in other who give in that way, right? Musically. And a special welcome to our friends from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Uh, if there's some people up here you don't recognize, they're probably Lutherans. <laughs> We're so happy you came. We're so happy you came to Ring Bells. Um, more, even more praise to God. Um, and so let us worship God as we give ourselves to God. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy God, with glad and generous hearts, we give you thanks and praise for all the gifts that you've given to us, even only today, the gift of music and for the way that it inspires us and lifts our souls to you, for um, the gift of making connections in the larger community and the uh, challenge and the invitation to use uh, this building wisely, to be good stewards of all that you have given to us, to make connections with one another and to deepen the bonds that we have with each other. Oh God, we hope and pray that even a few of our um, online worshipers will join us on that Sunday, that first Sunday in November, as we celebrate our life together in you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. With full hearts, we thank you. May our full hearts overflow with love and compassion for a world in great need. We can pick almost any place around the globe and find trauma and war and greed. So we are sending our love to those places now, praying that your grace will transform the space and change lives. May our full hearts overflow with love and compassion for the people of Puerto Rico, Florida, Nicaragua, and for others who rebuild their homes and lives after other kinds of disasters. We send our love there now and pray your grace will transform those places and change lives. May our hearts, our full hearts, overflow with love and compassion for those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit for those who struggle every day and every hour with addictions, for those undergoing treatment, for those who prepare for surgery, thinking of our own Carrie Larson, for those who are waiting, waiting for medical appointments, waiting for test results, waiting for access to health care, waiting to feel better and stronger and pain-free, maybe, oh God, even waiting to come home and be with you. We send our love to those people now and pray your grace to transform those situations and to change lives. Our hearts and minds and lives are full, oh God, because of you, from your fullness, your completeness, your wholeness, we have received so much grace added to grace. May our lives be a continual thank offering to you as we follow Christ, our risen Lord, in whom we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our debt. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Guests in person, we hope you will meet your fellow worshipers over a cup of coffee or a tea following this service. Um, guests online, we hope to see you for a coffee break tomorrow about 10.30 on Zoom. You'll see the link in tomorrow's email. You can come for five minutes if that's all your boss will allow you, or you can stay uh, longer if you want. We'd love to see your face and catch up with you a bit. I forgot to say at the beginning of the service that Reverend Austin is away, has been away this week, returning uh, today from her father, father's bedside. He is quite frail. And so keep her in prayer. Keep that whole family in prayer. Um, could the coat update, 99 coats you all did, you all gave. So well done. 99 coats to Summit Hall. And um, you'll be hearing more about that, but well done. 
Next week is Consecration Sunday when we will dedicate our financial commitments for the coming year, 2023. You should have received a mailing about that. But there's more. Adult Education is also having a coffee, their special fair, um, next Sunday. So there's a lot going on. Remember to stop by the caring card table. This is to the in-person crowd. Remember to stop by the caring card table after the service to sign cards for our friends. Now let us sing our sending song, Go to the World. Receive this benediction. Be encouraged by the word of God. Know that God's love will not let you go. Live in harmony and be at peace. And never be scared of the overwhelming love of the triune God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. The peace of Christ be with you.
Welcome to Eighth Historic Presbyterian Preschool and Kindergarten. My name is Sophie Dobbins and I am the new director of GPG and A. Are you looking for a fun and loving classroom? If you're looking for a nurturing, academic, home away from home, Christian environment for your children, then please visit our website at gppk.com. We have open enrollment all year long. We would love for your children and family to be a part of our GPP and K family. You may call or email our main office to schedule a tour. We look forward to hearing from you.